Let's go with everything. It's a non-stop party. <laughs> on a German timetable. Do you delay? Uh, no, you're delayed. From high-flying entertainment to daring jaunts. There's always something for guests to sink their teeth into. At the helm of it all, we'll think to get rid of those. A captain who never forgets who really rules the waves. No matter how modern the ship is, how big, the elements, if they don't want you to be here, then you won't be here. Aida Nova is a boatload of fun from stem to stern. Guests can party in 23 different bars and lounges. Feast in their choice of 17 restaurants. Swing and slide through an ocean-bound amusement park. Or just kick back on the wide open top deck. At every port, there's a new island experience just waiting to be explored. The options you have as a passenger, you know, they're almost unlimited. So the biggest challenge is actually to find out what is your favorite. For Captain Vincent Safalka, commanding Aida Nova has proven to be a sweet spot. There are basically two career paths, nautical and technical. And I chose a nautical one. The, well, it was bullseye. He can't help but brag about his ship. It's brand new and it's really packed with the latest technology. Also, good morning, stand by. We're in the briefing. Innovation doesn't come cheap. With a billion dollar price tag, Aida Nova is the world's fifth largest cruise ship, and it's been totally decked out, ready to dazzle up to 5,200 guests. We have a lot of prototype systems in every department, uh, technical, nautical, bridge equipment, uh, guest service department, entertainment, you name it. But it's what you can't see that makes Aida Nova the prototype for cruising into the future. This is the very first large cruise ship built with uh, LNG fuel technology. Liquefied natural gas is the cleanest burning fossil fuel, producing almost no toxic particles and 80% less nitrogen oxides than the heavy fuel oil most cruise ships run on. This ship runs on clean natural gas. Schönen guten Tag. Over the next seven days, Aida Nova will sail from Spain's Canary Islands up to the Portuguese island of Madeira. Then back south to island hop through the Canaries. Tenerife, Fuerteventura and Lanzarote, before a return to Gran Canaria. We got three engines, no technical limitations, so far reported. How she's behaving with the At Las Palmas, Gran Canaria, Aida Nova's bridge team are eager to get the ship out to sea. I don't see them. I see that yeah. one pickup, yeah. That's, that's but before they can go anywhere... Where could they be? They have to wait on a local gone MIA. God damn it. Welcome. Well, I don't know. The mooring men are late. The pilot is kind of late, so... Uh... The captain can't leave without a local pilot on board. He also needs the mooring crew to set the lines free. So the departure should be 2200, so there's no way I'm going to make this now. Cutting it fine. They're right. Yes, and there he is. The mooring team finally show up. Oh, oh, please don't hurry up. But they're in no rush. Germans have the clocks, the others have the time. So this is a ship tailored for the German-speaking markets, and that's the issue. With no time to spare, the pilot finally puts in an appearance. Welcome aboard, Mr. Pilot. You know that I have a departure in 20 seconds. Okay. Yes. Um, so what happened? Any delay or...? No. Do delay. Uh, no, you're delayed. <laughs> I was expecting I, you 15 minutes before departure. <laughs> Ida Nova needs to get a move on. Four lines and wait. And out to sea as soon as possible. Roger, off, let go all. Pulling the 337-metre-long ship away from the dock and moving forward is simple enough. It's manoeuvring past the vessel ahead of them that's the tricky part. You can have some gusty winds here. 
when you go into the windshielding of the other ship, uh, you know, let's say your forward part is shielded, but the aft part is not. And, you know, she could start angling up and actually you're heading towards the ship. So you have to be careful to balance the remaining wind force, which still attacks your stern while you go ahead so that she's not going to turn to port, you know, towards the other ship. The bridge team threads its way through the congested port, then turns left into open water. All right, secure the anchors for a seat. Day two of the cruise is spent at sea. Hello. It's the perfect opportunity for guests to dive into all the ship has to offer. In the Four Elements playground, an active crowd tackle the trippy water slides. Before testing their sea legs on the jungle climbing ropes. I just did the rope park, it was really exciting with the height and uh, the ship is moving and it's really good fun. It was like wobbly, but it was like fun and you were climbing and then you saw the holes um, down there. The more laid back are busy drifting off on the top deck. We love the German night cruise. <laughs> It's only mid-morning. But this boisterous crowd is already putting the umph in umpapa. As you can see, it's really busy, huh? So please make sure that the service is organized and everybody is happy, huh? Head of food and beverage Patrick Schlechtendahl's team is serving up about 100 kilograms of chicken and 40 kilos of Bavarian white sausage. The big galley is busy, of course the service is busy and we have to manage in only a few minutes that everybody is getting the food fast, the drinks fast and this is the biggest challenge for us. Guests happily fed and watered. For everything else, General Manager Nicola Gulen is at beck and call. It's I mean, never getting boring. Go ahead. Hi, morning. Hello. Good morning. This morning, he's running his rounds of the ship. First stop, the beach club. This afternoon we'll be pretty back, so uh, we need to make sure everybody gets a nice place. OK, sure. No okay, can you take care? Yeah, yeah I can organize. Thank you. No need for early risers to stake their claim. There's plenty of room under this state-of-the-art membrane roof. Let's say you have bad weather or it's grey or tar, whatever, you will here have the impression that you're on a Caribbean beach is enjoying the sun. A personal oasis. And make sure everything is tight. Is also on offer with these secluded cabanas. They're going to enjoy a very exclusive time here in the sun and following uh, that everything is getting right. The beating heart of the Aida Nova is the Theatrium, a three-story entertainment venue which sits right at the center of the ship. Just press the button and everything is safe, and then we go up with the stage. That's where Gabrielle Link, Aida's manager of Premier Productions, is pulling together a brand new extravaganza. Steampunk Circus is invented for our passengers as the big family show of Aida Nova. Not set to premiere until later in the voyage, the Circus Spectacular is in final rehearsals. How do you feel? <sighs> Almost ready. Almost ready? Almost ready, yeah. Right now, all eyes are on acrobats Anton Costera and Serhii Klemenko and their jaw-dropping routine. It's tricky, especially with those two guys hanging up in the air. Thank you. We have a ship's movement. Oh, you also have to check that the technician up there and the two artists are interacting in a perfect way together. That's basically what makes it so difficult. You're not allowed to have mistakes in there. It's like one mistake's usually enough. <laughs> if the waves cause the ship to roll, the smallest mistake could tip the balance of this act into the danger zone.
So is that the pilot? Um, yeah, I'm passing the brake water now. Very good. It's 5 a.m. on day three of the cruise. Captain Vincent Safalca is guiding Aida Nova into the harbour of Funchal on the Portuguese island of Madeira. Pilot boat approaching 10 meter. He's running three of the ship's four engines for the entry. When all of a sudden, yeah, the question pilot boat is there any particular move. reason why we are uh, on MGO as one engine. He spots an issue and has to call down to engine control. You know, we got now three engines running for the maneuver, and uh, I saw there was one engine um, on the, running on diesel instead of LNG. Aida Nova is a pioneer, the first cruise ship to sail using cleaner burning liquefied natural gas with diesel as a backup. If something happens... It's not gonna, it's not gonna affect our maneuver, right? The engines automatically switch from LNG to diesel fuel in less than a second. Don't sail without backups. But the goal for every cruise is to sail start to finish on LNG alone. Oh, OK, thank you. OK, we're back to full LNG mode. Well, they had this little hiccup for safety reasons. You know, they, they switched uh, to diesel to have a steady power supply. But now it's switched back already, so we have them all running on LNG. Morning, Mr. Pilot. Morning. Hello, Captain. Nice to see you again. Hiccup over. Captain Safalka gets back to work with local pilot Jose Silva. Ada Nova will approach the harbour and swing the stern 90 degrees in the turning basin. Then they'll back up to come alongside the dock. This is, position. This is our intended manoeuvre, you know, I pin the bow there. Any particular questions from your side? On a mission to mentor his junior team members. I do like running a team, I do like building a culture. The captain gives first officer Jan Hilpert the responsibility of pivoting the ship. Yeah. We'll take her to 355, 356. Don't be shy. Uh, with that speed pattern, it's no problem. You know, she's doing exactly what we want her to do, you know? Yeah. We're losing the speed. She starts turning. My pivot point is all the way to the forward. Just beautiful. So basically, right now, it's hands in the pocket and just see what she does. Okay. Huh? With the turn almost complete, take and control. The captain will steer the ship back into her berth. So we should see now the breakwater any second. Yeah, there it is. Out on the breakwater, Aida Nova's biggest fan waits with open arms. Anytime, wind, rain, snow, whatever condition, you got this uh, this guy welcoming us into port. <laughs> Thank you, <most> guy. <laughs> By 7 a.m. Slide step on the brake should do the trick. Aida Nova is tied up at the berth. The swing was almost perfect, and also good cooperation with the pilots, as usual in Funchal, you know. Today I'm quite happy. With plenty to explore, the Portuguese archipelago is a favorite cruise stop. Richtig, drinnen sind. Und dann kommen die wieder von hier vorne hin. Madeira's Funchal is a 600-year-old settlement, and beyond its harbour lies more than botanical gardens and its namesake wine. Mm. You control your descent, one hand here, and the other hand below the carabiner. JP Bukachi is the ship's activities manager. Today, he's taking his guests 1,500 meters above sea level for a top-down dose of thrills and spills. Uh, you're gonna sit down here, okay? Walk to this side, move. I'm not scared, but it's very cool. They're rappelling down the sides of watery gorges at Funchal Ecological Park. Good night, good night. Yes. Come on, very good, excellent. This natural heritage site is a hotspot for canyoning one of the world's fastest growing adventure sports. Don't try to shoot your way. We're gonna be more slippery. I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm a little bit nervous, but excited. This is definitely a um, yeah, lifetime experience for our guests. It's a great adventure. The guests enjoy it because they don't have that in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yes, we'll just see what we find. Back on solid ground, in downtown Funchal, Chef Franz Schneed and his sous chef Denise Weller are on the hunt for culinary inspiration. How are you? Fine. It's very good. Is the most better banana we have in the island because it's the more sweet one. This is why we are coming on the market also. That would dry what we get, and then sometimes this is when I go back to the to the ship. I go in my kitchen, in my galley, and then uh, I create some new dishes. Oh, 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 oh. And for the main course, a meal that looks like it might bite back. Wow. This is Espara. It's uh, 1,200 meters under the water, as on the sea. You have to angle it in the night time when it's coming up. This fish is especially here for Madeira, and all the guests ask me always, ah, I saw the fish, the ugly fish on the market. How is the taste? Very nice. <laughs> As the day winds down, high up in the hills of Funchal, General Manager Nikola Gulen and Security Officer Robert Bartels have come ashore to stretch their sea legs. You know, for a seaman, home is where you drop the anchor. It's very important that you have some, some distance from the ship. You're living on the ship, you're, you're working on the ship, you're, you're doing always the same stuff. And so, so it's, it's very important that you, that you get out sometime and just find some inner peace. So now we're hungry, huh? Yeah. Now <laughs> oh, let's go eat. I didn't have lunch, so now it's time to go for it. Hoping to serve them up a treat back on board, yeah. Chef Franz is making sure that delicious is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, the maracuyas, please. I have a new idea. We put it directly in the pan, the maracuyas, so it's also a little bit warm. Today's catch is fast becoming a real sizzler. It's a flavor fest celebrating the best of local, with a color burst to match. Madeira is an island of flowers, so we give also some flowers on top. Voila, and that's for us Madeira on the plate in the Rossini. A little bit taste from the island on the cruise ship. Okay, I will tell you when we are through and then you can go on. Ready to keep wowing Aidenova's guests, there's one more feast for the senses in store. So we expect tonight um, about 1,000 people. Head of entertainment Eva Piorco and her team are transforming the beach club into a nightclub. But there's a twist. We are not allowed to have uh, real loud music and special ports. That's why the guests will hear this music over special headphones. A silent disco that lets partygoers choose music from one of three different DJs. So they can dance to their own beat. Every guest is, who has these headphones is like... And you are like, oh my God, what's going on here? It's the quietest rave you'll ever see. So this is uh, really funny. The party continues as Aida Nova slips silently into the night. Raj, lad. Morning, Rami. <sighs> it's going too goddamn early. It's the crack of dawn on day five of the cruise. And Aida Nova is entering the port of Santa Cruz de Tenerife. And coming alongside. On this approach, Staff Captain Michael Schmidt will back the ship up to the dock. It should be a breeze. We start now closing in uh, with the stern towards the berth, and at the same time, we start getting the ship um, slowly parallel. All right, actually, three meters. Three meters to go. Three to go. But then... Why the hell is she still creeping astern? Yeah. It's the wind, maybe. Uh, I guess. Just a little. That ship is always a tight fit, but now, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we're just experiencing some headwinds. There's a strong wind funneling down the mountains onto the ship's bow, pushing it past the berth. So we have to go a couple of meters ahead again. Three to go forward. Aft station, spring line status. One meter to go, one. One meter to go forward. You know, this is our tolerance, 40 centimeters. 
on a 337 meter ship. Finally, after winning against the wind, Forward station, uh, keep tight our lines, vessel is alongside in position. Finding a position with that uh, huge lady can be, can be challenging. So, uh, welcome to Tenerife. Tenerife is the largest of the Canary Islands. Its warm weather and golden beaches attracting close to six million visitors a year. Activities manager J.P. Bocacci and his girlfriend Kayleen Hartman may just have the cushiest jobs on the cruise. Today we want to try out uh, standard paddling at a new beach for our guests. It's so special. I think that's a quite a quality time working on this ship because if we can go outside, we can explore the destinations, but at the same time, I can explore all that with my boyfriend together. Woo! That makes it really, really special for me. <laughs> for some, it's a leisurely pace. For others, it's double time. 2,000 guests are back to life ashore, whilst an even bigger host of new guests set to board. That's approximately 1,100 cabins to prepare, making sure that the sheets are clean. It's a cardio challenge for executive housekeeper Janiel Kabat and her team. Because of the massive size of this ship, it's walking. Every embarkation day, I normally walk around 30,000 steps. <laughs> OK, guys, how are we here? OK, here she comes. The most important job today is to fuel up, or bunker, with liquefied natural gas. It's a lot more complicated than just sticking a hose in your car. We have several stages for the bunkering. So uh, right now we're on stage one, mooring off the barge. Twenty-four hours ago, the engineers began the real graft dramatically cooling down all the pipes and tanks that will carry or store the LNG. I will go on a bunker station. Okay. okay. Communication over the walkie-talkie, no? Yo, shadow seven. seven. To remain a liquid, LNG has to be kept really cold at minus 162 degrees Celsius. In a liquefied state, it is absolutely impossible to have an, uh, let's say, to explode or to ignite the gas. Risk with uh, LNG operation is, since it is so extremely cold, that, uh, you know, if you don't uh, treat your system properly, you can have cold shocks. A cold shock is when supercooled LNG from the bunker barge contacts a warm pipe on the ship, causing the fuel to vaporize and expand so rapidly it could even rupture the pipe. This can put a lot of stress on the system, on the pipings. A rupture would expose the natural gas to open air, where the slightest spark could start a fire. When you have gas inside the room, and this is a dangerous thing. Port control, the side and over, we are ready to take over the liquefied natural gas. Our lines are cooled down, we are ready to start with the bunkering process. With the bunker barge alongside, second officer Eustace Eckhardt sounds the alarm. Dear guests, this is your officer of the watch speaking. We will soon start bunkering of liquefied natural gas. So basically the entire seaside is now a restricted smoking area. So uh, you're not allowed to smoke on the balconies, you're not allowed to smoke outside on this side. We have security guards in place. We will start with tank number one. The bunkering operation is underway. Ah! Meanwhile, PSI Provision master Michael Vrabel is fueling up Paida Nova in a very different way. Can you put it on site, please? 120 tons of comfort food, because running out would be the absolute worst. Also, meat is inside, special German sausages. That's a typical German product, Rouladen, and Germans like it, really. We use it nearly every day. German food is important. And then there's the booze. Now we are in our wine tank store. We can put 3,000 liters of 
white wine or red wine inside. That's 45,000 liters. But as everyone knows, Germans really know their beer. Well, having a brewery on board of a ship, that's a very special thing. Giving new meaning to home brewed, Stefan Danner is crafting up a fresh batch, 800 liters worth. It begins with seawater. Seawater is being desalted in a reverse osmosis um, machine, which essentially removes all of the ions, all of the minerals, all of the salt, and um, leaves us with almost distilled water. And then we have excellent brewing quality water. Stefan's brew gets two steins up from the guests. Perfect. Control this Aida Nova. We are finished with our bunkering operation. We are now disconnecting the hoses. It's taken five hours, but Aida Nova has taken on 850 tons of liquefied natural gas. Enough to power the ship for the next two weeks. It's been a long day for the crew. <laughs> and once the ship is safely out to sea again, it's time for a bit of well earned RR in the crew-only oasis. A cruise room is much more than just a workplace, you know. You live there for several months. I think there's a sky boss called Alarm here. <laughs> As you can imagine, you know, uh, you need a kind of a sanctuary. You know, the crew can be amongst themselves, you know. So it is extremely important. OK, guys, as you know, this is one of the drawbacks. I'm buying the drinks, but I'm not drinking because I'm driving. So I'll leave, I'll leave you to the fun stuff. Cheers. Eight hours later, the captain is about to put those driving skills to the test. Going into a shallow area at low tide, and it's quite windy. They've sailed overnight from Tenerife to Puerto del Rosario, on the island of Fuerteventura. Just look at the tanker at this pier. So, uh, bosun, question, are uh, the sidekicks clear? Please, bosun, give me two meters ahead and we are clear of the morning. Mm. OK, off station, uh, question, two meters ahead, is that still OK? Faced with shallow waters. Wind up to 24 knots. Range goes on one meter ahead and we are clear for Captain Safalka rises to the occasion. He maneuvers the ship to meet a tricky mooring head on. Range goes on, can we in good position or no Roger, no ahead. So, vessel in position, heave, uh, keep tight both springs. Yes, forward station also. Keep tight our lines. Vessel is alongside. It took some fussing, but Aida Nova is docked. Was a bit of a, you know, um, played by ear, so to speak, but um, it worked out. So that's, this is all about, you know, make it easier in the future, now that you did it for the first time. The island of Fuerteventura is all about spectacular scenery. And lots and lots of sand. My task for today is to check out the vehicles and the agency, the whole, the whole excursion for the guests. And let's check this out. First up for activities Don, JP and his guests, making tracks across a wide open nature reserve that spans over 10 square miles. Trade winds mean shifting sands and an ever-changing desert view. Back aboard Aida Nova, a new wave is coming in. Hello, Privetsky. Today we'll see the premiere of the Steampunk Circus. The ship is moving a little bit today, so we will do it full out, but you have to take care that it's really working. Gabrielle Link has called for a last minute rehearsal with acrobats Anton and Serhi. Okay, and now Bennett. She's tweaking some of the moves in case the ship rolls during the show. I like that. It's final run. Of course, we're nervous. <laughs> Anything else? No. 
Okay, then, uh, can you Up on the bridge, the it's time for second officer Justus Eckhard to step into the spotlight. So, how are you doing today? Pretty fine, thank you. Are you sure about that? Yes. He's yes. getting a promotion. Mr. Eckhart, formerly known as second officer. Yeah. It is uh, now official that uh, you received your promotion to first officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feel free to get rid of those. Yeah. <laughs> and um, here we go. Now that already looks much better. You've just been promoted. <laughs> Thank you very Thanks much. Well. Take care. Well, that's a big deal. Oh, yeah, it is. Don't forget to sanitize afterwards. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. All the best. As the day winds down, a sunset pilgrimage to a lava coast and a spectacular view of the Atlantic. I think this is the view why I'm doing my job, actually. So this is um, one of the moments I realized that I'm doing all right. That's amazing, yeah. Tonight, it's time for a newly promoted first officer to be launched. Justus is taking the ship out to sea under Captain Safalka's supervision. So he's actually driving, you know, hands on the sticks. So now we start ramping up, the, let's say, a bit the difficulties of the maneuvers. Today we have a bit stronger wind conditions. With winds gusting up to 30 knots or 55 kilometers per hour. So now the wind is gusting up a bit more. Um, yeah, and first time reversing it basically out of this port. Yeah. Justus is going to be earning those stripes. Aida Nova, forward aft station. Let's go everything. Watching over his newly promoted first officer, Captain Safalka guides Justus Eckhardt yeah. as he eases Aida Nova away from the dark. The wind is not, not constant, you just have to pay attention to the bow. Justus will then have to move the bow to starboard 90 degrees to point the ship out to open water. Stop the bow thrust. Why do you stop the bow thruster? Stop the bow thruster because like, I don't want her to move too fast stern. But actually, I'm not happy with the movement. Yeah, we'll just increase on the bow again. Because you know that the thing is, the bow thruster has even more momentum with the wind. Yeah. So if you stop it too early, yeah. you're, you will, you will move the entire ship that way. If you would let her run for three, three minutes, four yeah. minutes that way, so yeah. it's, not it's not an issue. Eustace might be battling the wind, but he's learning to stand firm. Rate of, rate of turn. The wind already crossed your bow. Your bow does not have a problem with the wind. You're yeah. checking the speed, yeah. you're helping with the stern, and uh, you know about 10, 10 degrees more, and uh, the wind will push on the, the wind. Ball. Will be your ally, actually. Yeah. yeah. So now she starts turning. He successfully maneuvers the big ship out of port. No, so Actually, no, we are just clear, so we can both can go put straight. Both. OK, so both pots are running ahead. Pitch four, both thrusters stopped, proceeding to the center. Assured, he then takes control at the center console. OK, and I take over controls in the center. Justus may have practiced this departure on a virtual simulator, but doing it for real is a proper victory. If you fail on the simulator, well, it's just, you know, insert coin, push one player. But here, if something goes wrong, um, bad idea. Working with the wind uh, was more challenging than expected. Um, yeah, but quite happy and thank you for the opportunity. OK, so ready to take the charge? I'm ready to take the charge. With the ship now out at sea, the entertainment team are ready to put their skills to the test. What we finally can present it to the audience. A bit, a bit shaky. <laughs> excited a lot, excited. After two years in development and six weeks of rehearsal, it's finally showtime for the premiere of the Steampunk Circus. Have a good show. Finally, after weeks of work for you, we are there. Oh, guys, listen up, everybody. Guys. Oh, hello. So, since it's a premiere, break a leg. Okay, <laughs> have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we bring you the circus. Let's go fly like the time is high, time to bring the circus. 
the ensemble cast weaves its magic. before Anton and Serhi take them to new heights, showing an impressive level of agility. The ship rocks a little, but the acrobats just roll with it. Yeah. Now we're so happy. Yes. Now release every emotion, stay calm now, yeah. and just keep on doing it. Keep on doing it, do it, do it. The artist did a great job, even though ship a little shaky. I'm completely freaking out now. Proceed. Yeah. A four-hour journey overnight takes Aida Nova to Arecife on the island of Lanzarote, the final port on this cruise. Heading set course. Um, Gentlemen, usual maneuver. So we do the approach. We make a 180 turn. And, uh, <coughs> and we go in backwards. So three knots. At first, it seems their arrival is going to plan. We approach to our uh, berthing position and then uh, we find our position. Now the challenge is. Um, just stand by. We just are on one engine now. Say what? We are on one engine for whatever reason. Blindsided. Was the engine already in yellow or red manning? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, hello, so um, what happened? The captain has just been told they're only running on one engine. So shall I keep her on uh, the minimum RPM set for the moment? After using two engines to sail here overnight, one engine has suddenly shut down. Hola. This is your uh, issue. We are just running on DG number three. Down in engine control, they're troubleshooting. Uh, we let you know when we are ready. Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know exactly what happened. It's just that you know uh, we lost one engine. It just disconnected and uh, started shutting down. Captain Safalka wants three of Aida Nova's four engines operating to maneuver the ship to the dock. Okay, so they're getting the engines back online one by one. For the moment, we keep it on minimum RPM. Yeah, we keep it on minimum. Until further notice. I could even do it with two engines if necessary, but that kind of limits your power reserves. So speed-wise, we're still coming down. Ten minutes later. From ahead. All the generators are back in service. We want to go with two, three, and four. The mystery shutdown is solved. A minor sensor failure is to blame. With three engines back up and running, the captain lays out a backup plan. And anything, uh, let's say, goes wrong, uh, let's say I, I lose my bow thrusters, we will go straight uh, right out again. If I lose my propulsion, then uh, we stop the ship, either with the anchors or by the wind. Once in the harbor, the captain turns the ship around. I'm taking the wind pretty much dead astern. Uh, which uh, is going to make it easier to get the ship into the port. Then he backs toward the dock. Zero. Forward off 202 position. With his teams on the bridge and in engine control, monitoring the engines the entire time. The wind is pushing us back. I just give her a nudge with the engines. Just give a kick with the engines. And here she comes. Now she oh, she's moving. No matter how modern the ship is, how big, how powerful, the elements, if they don't want you to be here, then you won't be here, and you have to respect that. Blissfully unaware of the midnight showdown, passengers wake up, eager to head out on tour. 
having emerged from the sea as a result of volcanic eruptions that started 15 million years ago. Lanzarote is out of this world with a breathtaking shoreline. But these guests aren't looking to discover it, as you'd expect. They're really diving in. Passengers tour unexplored waters in this high-tech submarine, which came with a $4 million price tag. With room for 48 passengers and crew, The sub can take a deep dive, up to 60 meters deep, where passengers can feast their eyes on up to 700 different marine species found in the Canary Islands. It was a great idea to drive with the submarine. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. By 7 p.m., everyone is above the waterline and back aboard. Ready. Ready. Okay, well then, pilot, pilot shall we? Pilot. Let go all. Nova forward off station, let go off. As Captain Sefalka sets sail for the return to Gran Canaria. Can you uh, just advise the stations that we are pushing actively alongside no. so because of the wash and, and uh, with the lines that they are careful? He takes a moment to reflect. So you got a beautiful sunset. You just sailing towards the open sea after a pretty successful week, actually. These are the moments which also, let's say, fuel your motivation to, you know, start over again for a new cruise. Another cruise, packed with memories. But this captain and his ship aren't looking back. We try to keep our working environment clean. I'm not talking about the ship, I'm talking about, you know, the oceans. Because otherwise there is nothing to, to show to our customers. With its cutting edge technology, and conscientious drive, Aida Nova is forging a new, greener way to fuel adventures and travel in style.